when you're over 30, you can wake up feeling sore for no reason. So you might as well have a good reason. We had just watched the Tony Hawk HBO documentary and like, like just learned what the Bones Brigade was and stuff and was like all hyped on it. And he was like, yeah, we could be something like the Bones Brigade. I was like, yeah, but we're like old and like not good. And he was like, <laughs> okay, well, we could be like the Broken Bones Brigade. And I'm like, I kind of feel like that's going to discourage people more than <laughs> more than encourage people to, to hang out. So I, Broken Bones Brigade, I love it. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think it would have grown as pretty much as it has with that being the title. But So we went with Brittle Bones Brigade. I hope you enjoyed this brief clip from one of our favorite moments in this episode. Go to brailleskateboarding.com forward slash podcast to listen to the full episode. For anybody who is an adult, the conundrum that we always talk about is um, you go to the park as an adult beginner and the people your age rip and the people your skill level are like six years old. So you go to the park and you just don't know where you belong, who to talk to, how to fit in. Uh, and I think, and that feeling is, it's really it, it's a major bummer because it's like you come in, you're excited to skate, you're excited to like be a part of this thing that you've heard is really cool. And then you get there and it's just like, you, you know, it, it's a big letdown because you don't really know how to fit it. And so like, I think that the, the purpose of, and the goal for us is like that nobody would feel that way when they come to the park, that they always will know that even if it's just like just me or just me and Frank, like you have at least one or two days a week that you can come and somebody will be there and you can hang out, no judgment, be as bad as you want for as long as you want. And we're just going to, we're going to hang and you can be a part of our community. So for nobody to have to feel that like let down of like, I think skating is really cool, but I don't actually know how to be a part of it and what's happening. Yeah, there's a, and people call it like a gatekeeper. Yeah, gate, oh man, gatekeeper. I'm glad you brought that up. Gatekeeper is such an interesting turn to me because I have such a, such a, I go back and forth on that because I like, I feel like there are gatekeepers of like, you know, those people are just super rude of like, I don't know, I guess they just have forgotten that they ever were a beginner. But there's also so many people that, I totally understand where they're coming from. Yeah. Cause you, you look at, you look at skaters, like even locally, and I'm sure it's 10 times crazier out in California where in my head, every single person skates. Yeah. But even locally, there are people who are so, so good who are posting stuff all the time of just tricks that like it would be my dream to land one of these. And they're just throwing them in, in lines like, like it's nothing. Yeah. And they're getting, you know, a hundred views. And I can see how that would be so frustrating to be like, I've been doing this since I was like 10 years old and I've put my blood, sweat and tears in this. I've been in the hospital multiple times for this and, and I'm now very good at it. Yeah. And you're getting more views than I am because I don't know, people think it's wholesome or whatever, you know? So I, I can totally understand like some re resentment of that. And so that that's why it be, started to become really more important to me of like how can we bridge the gap so like we're not over here and they're over there like let's, right we're all let's skaters it's all part other. of the same community yeah it's mm. so fascinating super interesting so how do we bridge that gap that's i think that's our next step is trying to figure that out and i think to me what seemed really important is to be a part of like whatever this the scene is like trying to do and so like there is there's a DIY spot that um is kind of on the other side of town um from from where the park is and um and there's just people who have been trying to make that a thing for a long time and so um actually showing up to like pour concrete and like you know clear trash out of spots like that like when people are doing it um it's it's being a part of those those times it's like where it doesn't really actually matter if you're good at skating or not it's just contributing to what what's going on 
in the scene at that moment. I I feel like that goes a, a long way. Like I feel like the friendships that I've gotten to make so far outside of just the the beginners have kind of come ar- around that of like yeah. just trying to like you know what is what kind of stuff is the shop posting about like that that they care about like what sort of fundraiser th- or things are they supporting i want to support that so people know it's it's you know it's not i'm not i'm not in this so you'll think that i'm cool like i i want to i want to care about what you want to care about so you know we can connect yeah build a community together yeah it's super fascinating i think we got to get I, th- I guess it's like twofold you got to get the people who are good at the skate park to show respect and help the beginners and then you got to get the beginners to not be scared of those guys and to just go because a lot of times the the fear is a little bit unfounded. And I think it comes from some internet. Well, oh, I read this stuff on the internet. These guys are wild. They hate me if I mall grab. But yeah. I but but more times than not, you know, the really good at this kid at the skate park or guy or whoever um will be very respectful. Probably more than you think. Yeah, it's like I said, I've I've never seen the opposite. I've only, you know, if you show up and like talk to one of those guys, they've never been anything but super nice to us. Yeah. Absolutely. They probably really appreciate it. Well, I feel like groups like yours are helping to grow skateboarding at its core, which is why I wanted to know more about it and how, you know, I'm really trying to solve, like, how do we get people to do this more? When I started the Braille Army channel, this is the whole point. I literally said, you guys start a crew. We called them squads, Braille Army squads. You start a squad, make videos with your friends, which is what I grew up doing. Send the videos in. We're going to watch them, da, da, da. And I'm going to try and get back into that mode of it rather than just like, okay, we do a trick. Mowgli does the hardest trick in the world. 540, tray flip, lip, whatever, the handrail. And then people go, oh, that trick is cool. But there's like a whole aspect of building the community at the grassroots level that I feel like is, I feel like it's getting a little bit lost in skateboarding. And and that's so, I don't know, it was sad or just like sucks. It sucks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I I get that. But I think for adults, the big thing is they're so scared. I, I feel like it's specifically that everyone always talks about their wrist. It's like, oh, uh, well, I can't. I can't break my wrist because I have, I got work. I got work. I got kids. I got a manual labor job or I have a desk job and I need my wrist for all of those things. And so I I think that the first step is like, it's really important to just remind people of like, you come the first night, you, we don't, don't drop in on the vert ramp. Like, (laughs) please don't drop in on the vert ramp. Please don't do it. Like, you're not allowed. Skate flat. (laughs) And nothing else. Like go in a straight line. And I promise you, you'll have, if you've never done that before, you'll have a great time doing that. And you're not going to break your wrist doing that. Like it's not actually our, our unofficial motto is, um, when you're over 30, you can wake up feeling sore for no reason. So you might as well have a good reason. Like you're, if you're, so like if you're on flat and you fall, you could have just easily fallen up like stepping off a curb like it's just you just (laughs) never know and so like but just like encouraging people to like you're you're not gonna come out there and immediately break both legs and go to the hospital like just just take it easy take it like i feel like y'all talk about this all the time in your videos is like taking things on a gradient like yes don't start with the biggest thing and you won't you won't break all your bones just like go just take it easy and it's still fun yeah, soccer, baseball, football, all the other sports are far more dangerous. If you if you learn skateboarding correctly, it's super safe. Helmet, elbow pads, knee pads, just learning how to push, you're safe. Yeah. You're only going to fall so far. But you go out into a baseball field, you could get cracked with the baseball. Football, you're getting smashed between two giant, you know, and people always go, that because that's a big thing about skateboarding, parents say. That's dangerous. I don't want my kids to do that. They're going to break their leg. And it's actually, but then they're like, oh, I'll sign my kid up for football. Of course, that's what every kid's going to do. I wonder if like, if parents would be less nervous about it, if there was like some sort of like external points that you could get, because it's like at any point, like you say, you could, you could break a leg, you could tear an ACL or whatever on a football field. And they're at every single play, you're putting your body on on the line, 
but there's like this other goal that it like somehow makes that worth it. It's like, it doesn't matter if like he gets, you know, tears his ACL because he was going for the end zone and that's what counts, you know? And so if like, I don't know, if like, I think if parents could like understand like dropping in or doing a rock to fake you for the first time, like is our going for the end zone and that is what makes putting your body on the line worth it. Like I feel like they would, you know, understand it more, but yeah. Yeah. We I had a friend this year that like kind of has like been dipping his toe. Like he'll, he'll come skate the ramp every now and then, but like, he's been nervous about getting hurt. And then he went and played a pickup soccer game one weekend and tore his ACL. It's like, yeah, <laughs> you just don't know, man. Yeah. You should have done the rock to fakie. You could have had it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So fascinating. And it's also like, how do you communicate to those people that have never skateboarded? It's like, you know, I made a video where I had my wife come, who she doesn't care about skateboarding at all, even though she's married to the sponsored skateboarder from the San Francisco Bay Area, could care less, which I love because <laughs> yeah. it gives me that very good dichotomy and, and world outside of skateboarding. But I sat her down and was like, you've seen this for years and years and years. You've seen videos, you've seen lots of it, you've seen me. So we're going to do a bunch of tricks and you're going to name them. And just the learning curve just to name what the tricks are and then last night I saw this thing on Tony Hawk and it was on the video game and they were pointing out the thing that people don't understand is millions of people that had no interest in skateboarding picked up that video game and now they know what the tricks look like, the names of the tricks. Mm -hmm. They were literally getting educated into what skateboarding was yeah. and that created the biggest skateboarding boom ever. So now I'm trying to figure out how do we educate people into what skateboarding is, the positive aspects of it, the values of it, what does it teach you? How do we grow it again? Because skateboarding has been on this dwindling. Some people think, oh, it's no, it's bigger than it ever was. No, it's been literally dying for years. Since 2002, it's actually been declining. Yeah. Well, it, yeah, I think, I think there was a perception that it spiked again in during the pandemic just because people were like looking for a thing to do. Yeah, but it did. The, the industry had a huge, you could not keep skateboards. It, any skateboard you had, graphic, non-graphic, no matter what, it was just selling instantly. And now uh, you have people who bought tons of boards. So now you have warehouses full of boards that aren't selling. Now you have the downside of that. So that, and now you have companies who will literally not make it through this time period because... Financially, it's brutal, really that's, brutal. Yeah. That's tough. I didn't. I didn't think about that because just locally, like the local shop is still doing well because just because we got this new park. Yeah, yeah. So there's, but like, yeah, nationally, that it's a different story. Yeah, or internationally, I guess. Yeah, internationally, it's a wild scene, which is so interesting. Which just takes me back to this funny thing where it's like we need to grow skateboarding. Period. Like the one thing I can think of is like, we just don't have enough new people starting. How do we get people starting? Which I think is cool because I think that's what you guys are doing. Yeah. I think the Brittle Bones Brigade is starting new people. Oh, man, we are. It, gosh, I I was just, I was blown away last night. So that guy um, who's starting the Huntsville group, um, he, I mean, he, I, he skateboarded as a teenager. Like he, I, enough that he's like picked it back up again and is, like pretty good pretty quickly but it, it had been years and he watched one of our one i guess a couple of our instagram videos um said hey this would be cool to start here uh and then he came drove down and skated with us one night and that was about six weeks ago and he told me last night after like not skating for years he skated every day since then yeah and like now his kids are skating with them. He, he bought them all boards and like, you know, and, and he's fired up about it and stuff. And so like, he's it, and, like, just to hear him, like, yeah, like I, I hadn't been skating before I watched your videos. Now I'm skating. And now I have like a new way to like spend time with my kids and stuff like it. Like, that's just, that's wild. Like uh, it's, it's, we get people like every day, like messing with us. Like I bought a board for the first time ever or for the first time in years because I watched your videos. And I'm like, that's, that's awesome. That I, I don't get it. Like, I don't get like what it is about our videos that would make you like want to react like that. But I'm so 
glad that you did because I think it's going to be so good for you. Yeah, they're positive. They're beginner friendly. They're like everything that you need. You, that people want that community, and you guys are building that. Just so cool. I hope you enjoyed this brief clip from the episode. Go to brailleskateboarding.com forward slash podcast for the full enchilada. <laughs> <laughs>